Yes, you are the cutest. But you know, this video is not about you. Today, we are here to talk not about a cute little praying mantis, but about tarantulas and specifically my top favorite tarantulas for beginners. And this is gonna be just based on my opinion and my experience with my tarantulas. And of course it's gonna differ from person to person. So don't just take my advice, do your own research and make sure that most of all, you're getting a tarantula that you are excited for because you're gonna have the best experience with a tarantula that's something that you want. But I'm gonna share my top five and I had a hard time picking exactly how to number them. So instead of putting them in an order from best to least best, I'm gonna be giving you five different categories and picking my top in each category. So the five categories that I'm gonna be covering will be, what are they? So we're gonna go with the prettiest, largest, cutest, easiest care, and most chill. So I figured that way we can cover a broad range of categories and I can give you my favorites without having to pick favorites because how can you pick a favorite child? It's just rude, right? Please ignore this pink lipstick. I am not a makeup wearing kind of girl, but I thought I wanted to try something fun and I don't think it really worked out. But that's okay because we're not here for my makeup. We're here for tarantulas. So let's get started. So the first category on my list that we'll be discussing, this is a cattail, um, will be the prettiest tarantula. And now for my opinion, this might be a little bit different than someone else's because you may opt for a more colorful tarantula that you think is the prettiest. But for me, I went with something a little more simple, but something so striking and cool looking that you can't deny that it is a very pretty tarantula. And that is going to be the Gramostola pulchra or common name Brazilian black tarantula. Now I will do my best to show you mine, but mine is a little bit wacky. So in here we have Binks. Binks, stay in your enclosure. Right here. This is Binks, my grandma stole a pulchra, looking super cute. And he's a little dude, but he'll get bigger and cuter. And I think we might be approaching a pre molt here. Thank you, Binks. I love these tarantulas because this is a younger one and it will get bigger and blacker and more awesome and cool looking in the future. But I just love how they look, the solid velvety black color. It's just really cool. So I love them. I think they are the prettiest. If you want to go for a more colorful tarantula, go for it. But if you want something striking and crazy, I don't know, cool looking, I vote for the Gramostola pulchra. So one slight downside to the Gramostola pulchra is that they can be a bit pricey. So if you're interested in getting one, I do recommend getting them as a sling. Their growth rate is medium to slow. So it will take a while for them to gain a decent size, but I think it's worth it because you can be paying upwards of $500 for an adult. And I don't know about you, but I don't have that kind of money in the bank and I'm working my nine to five over here. So we don't have $500 to spend on a tarantula, but you can get a sling. Like I got this one Binks when he was maybe that big and I paid under a hundred dollars, which was a splurge for me, but I really wanted this species. So for me, it was worth it. The other good thing about the Grandma Stola Pulchra is that they do normally eat really well, which is important, especially for a beginner tarantula. You want to make sure that you see your tarantula eating. You don't want to be worrying or stressing if he's okay. And also they spend a lot of time out in the open and they don't run around a lot. So they're really fun to look at and really interesting. And when you have guests over, which I don't because I don't have any friends, but if you did, they would come over and see this cool big black tarantula sitting out in the opening and they'd probably be like, wow, yeah, that's, that's a cool tarantula. Let's move on to the next category, which will be biggest. So for the category of biggest tarantula, well, biggest tarantula that would be suitable for a beginner. Well, what I'm trying to say is that if you're like me, having a big, cool, impressive tarantula is something that you want. 
So if that is you, then you may want to consider getting a Laziodora Parahibana or Salmon Pink Bird Eater. And the great thing about these tarantulas is they get big. And I mean big, 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 not that big. <laughs> but they are really cool. They have a really pretty coloration. They call them the Salmon Pink Bird Eater and they're not like pink, 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 but they do have a pink tinge to them and it's cute. So if you would like a large tarantula, I recommend the Salmon Pink Bird Eater. Let me show you mine. I have a confirmed female here. Let's see if you can see her in her enclosure. Oh shoot, she's fast. But she is a pretty big girl. Actually, she's not. But here she is, she's coming to say hi to you. Here is my Salmon Pink Bird Eater. She is a young adult. She's not nearly full grown, but she is a confirmed female. She's super cute. You can see a little bit of that pinkish coloration coming in. But yes, this is her and I love her. Yeah, she's a really cool tarantula. She is quite speedy. Um, they can be a little bit bolty from what I've noticed. And one thing to keep in mind is that their butt hairs, urticating hairs that they kick off of their butt are itchy itchy when i was rehousing her when i got her i did get a little bit of residual hair on me and i was itching for days so i probably would not handle this tarantula i don't really handle tarantulas but if you did want to probably wouldn't handle this one just because they can have some itchy hairs if you do decide to get one of these just do keep in mind that they will get pretty big especially a female so be prepared to keep a big enclosure in your space if that's not for you maybe the lp or lazidora parahibana or salmon pink bird eater is not for you and that's okay but for someone who does want to start out with something big bold and beautiful you may want to get a lazidora parahibana now for the category of cutest and i know what you're thinking or you may be thinking tarantulas aren't cute but i beg to differ because my vote for the cutest tarantula that's suitable for beginners is the Cereocosmus elegans also called the i don't know what the common name is but often called in the tarantula community the heart butt tarantula and this is because they have the cutest little heart on their little booties, just like a My Little Pony, and it is so cute. I have a juvenile who's fairly small, and it's in this container. I'm gonna do my best to show you. Um, this little one often likes to make a run for it, so hopefully I can get something to show you. Okay, she's here on the side. Uh, I want you to see the heart. Okay, through the lid, you can see the small heart butt. I will now attempt to remove the lid. They're so difficult, but so cute. They are so cute. They're dwarf species, so they only grow to be a few inches. I think match max three inch leg span if I'm not mistaken. So they are very small. You don't need a lot of space for them. They are so cute. But the downside is that they are a more fossorial species, meaning they do burrow and live in the under the dirt quite a bit of time. So you will not see them out all the time. But when you do see them, it's really fun and exciting. So I think it's worth it. But if you want a tarantula that you are gonna see all day, every day, this might not be the one for you. But if you want something that's super cute and super adorable, then you may want to get a Serio Cosmos Elegans. They also can be a little bit speedy, so do keep that in mind. But I've noticed that they don't run far. Um, they'll just kind of like speed and then stop. So they're not too hard to keep control of. But yep, oh, it's out. There's the tarantula. And there's the heart butt. And there she goes. But yes, Cirrocosmus elegans. So cute. 10 out of 10. Let's move on to our next category. Category number four. Four is going to be the easiest of 
care. And so for the easiest of care, I would recommend the Tallulocotyl albopelosum or the curly hair tarantula. If you've done any research in tarantulas, I am more than sure that you have heard of the curly hair tarantula. They are a staple when it comes to beginner tarantulas and that is for good reason. They're really easy to care for and sometimes easy care is just something that you want and I don't blame you. So curly hair tarantulas don't need a lot. They just want to be at room temperature. If you're comfy, they're comfy. They don't need a lot of humidity. I just fill up the water dish and let it overflow a little bit so one corner of the substrate is wet. You feed them, they'll eat. They're not really going to turn down a meal unless they're in pre-molt. So that's nice. You don't really have to worry. They're pretty docile. You're not really going to have to worry about them bolting, making a run for it, though they might. <laughs> and they look cool. I mean, some people say they don't, they look boring, but I don't think so. They have crazy looking hair, it looks like they had a bad hair day and they slept funny or something and I love it. I have a few, hopefully at least one of them will show themselves for you to look at and let me go grab some. So in this container we have my large female curly hair tarantula. That's her butt. I wish I had a better shot. Maybe we can tease her out with some food. Okay. Come on out, girl. Here she comes. There's that cute little face that we love so much. That is a pretty girl. Oh my God, I just love her. And there she has her little worm. Cute. That was an excellent performance from my super cute curly hair tarantula. Her name is Blossom. And now we'll move on to the final category. Last category that we'll be talking about is the most chill. And of course, all tarantulas have different temperaments. And while mine of this species may be chill, you may come across another one that is very not chill. And keep in mind that tarantulas temperaments can change between molts. So you may have a really chill tarantula that molts and becomes a really crazy tarantula. So I like to keep in mind that tarantulas are more of look, don't touch kind of pets in my opinion. Now I don't say no to handling and if I do have a tarantula walk out on its own and I'd like to indulge in a little handling, sometimes I will do that. But do keep in mind that tarantulas gain nothing from you holding them. And if you're holding them, it's for your benefit, not for theirs. And you do have to be very careful because if you drop a tarantula, they will likely not survive. So don't risk your animal's life. If you can handle safely and carefully and you feel comfortable, then by all means, I'm not here to tell you no. I'm not gonna say I never do it because I do from time to time, but do keep in mind those things. That being said, the tarantula that I recommend for the most chill tarantula, and I'm kind of going to lump two together into this one, would be the Aphonopelma calcodes or the Aphonopelma hensi. And so the Aphonopelma calcodes, common name, this is not that, is the Arizona blonde or desert blonde. The Aphonopelma hensi is often called the brown tarantula. What is the common name? I don't know. That's why we use scientific names, friends, because you will not mistake a tarantula. I can't tell you how many times I've seen discrepancies in common names. <laughs> if you know the Latin name, I would use the Latin name. Let's just stick with that for now. So this is my Aphonopelma calcodes enclosure, and as you can see, it's completely burrowed itself in its hide. And so we're not gonna dig it out because we don't dig out tarantulas that have hid themselves away. That's them saying they want to be left alone. <laughs> I will be able to show you though, my Aphonopelma hensi. Oh, she's already coming out. There she is. This is Buttercup. She's an Aphonopelma hensi. The hensi and the Calcodes do look pretty similar. 
Um, the Hensi is more solid brown. Calcodes is lighter in color, has a little more variation, um, being pretty light blonde on the carapace and then brown on the abdomen and the legs. But the Hensi is a little more brown all around. So that being said, I would love to show you my pretty girl Buttercup. So here is Buttercup. She's my Fona Palma Hensi. She has a big booty on her right now. She's really cute. You can see she's kind of all brown and um, the Calcodes would be a little bit lighter on the oh, carapace area. <laughs> um, but she's still really cute and she's pretty chill and she's probably approaching a molt soon. But yes, um, I like her a lot. Thank you, Buttercup. Well, we've reached the end of my list of my top five tarantulas for beginners or to start out with. Um, again, these are my opinions and they might be different for you or for other people who keep these animals. If you do keep tarantulas already, comment below and let me know if you have a different preference in beginner tarantulas or if you are planning to get a tarantula and you have a different one in mind, let me know as well. I'd be happy to listen and talk about it because I love my tarantulas and I love to talk about them. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you gained some information. I hope that I was able to help you maybe come closer to a decision on the journey of getting your first tarantula. I plan to also make videos for beginner scorpions and beginner pet bugs in general as well as some more care tips and guides for beginners. If you have any specific questions, let me know so I can accommodate because I'd love to do that. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're still here, I really, really, really appreciate you. Subscribe, tell your friends, tell your grandma, tell your neighbor, tell your sister. Anyways, have a great day. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.